of just like father, just like the son. During a hearing about uh, antitrust issues uh, with sports, um, the Kentucky senator made this rather racist comment. The court ruled unanimously that the NCAA, the NCAA can't invoke their rules. And so they've completely screwed up college athletes. We used to be proud. Many of us love watching amateur athletes that weren't paid. Now everybody that plays basketball in, in college is going to be driving a Bentley or a Rolls. I mean, we're going to be seeing rap stars instead of basketball stars. I mean, this is crazy. But you know why it happened? Because Congress sat around and said, oh, well, because of antitrust, we can't let the NCAA do it. It went to the court, and the court made the ruling, unfortunately, a unanimous ruling based on the law. So the law's got to change. Antitrust shouldn't be involved with the social... Antonio, my page is unapologetically black ADOS. Europeans work hard at economically castrating black people. You have here a United States senator this openly discussing a plan to economically castrate American black youth, openly discussing using United States government as a means to prevent black youth from accumulating wealth off their own name, image, and likeness. If this is not economic castration, what is, is this is not a clear indication that your government has been weaponized against you as black people in order to inherently benefit white people and white institutions. What is this? He's clearly saying to you that they wanted Congress to enact a law to prevent the student athletes from being able to generate money off their name, image, and likeness. American black youth, because American black youth are primarily the financial engine behind NCAA uh, sports. The main revenue builders are football and especially basketball. So what are we going to do while they're openly plotting to economically castrate our youth? Black men, this is something you have to ask yourself. Why is it that student athletes aren't paid? Let's start by looking through. In the 2016-2017 school year, NCAA revenue reached $1 billion. Many people have argued that the players who drive this revenue don't receive the true value that they bring to their school. Black people, we have to take a look at ourselves and why are we allowing the NCAA and other organizations to continuously to come, out, come to our community and exploit the talents of our youth without properly compensating our youth regardless of the industries. And when you talk about sports, we're allowing them to do this at the same time, placing our children at physical risk. We have to hold ourselves accountable for the vulnerable position that we continue to allow each generation to be in. Our children is in such vulnerable conditions because we have failed to invest in the resources or environment that would make it conducive for our children to reach their full potential. That is a gruesome looking injury to Kevin Ware. Black man, we want women to take our leadership, but we got to take culpability for the lack of leadership that we provide. If we had provided proper leadership, then us in our community would have been trying to provide a safety net for the youth. We would have been requiring that those scholarships come with insurance policies insurance that if those in 
athletes was injured on the collegiate level making NCAA billions of dollars that they will be insured some form of income off of lost future revenues. Because they a lot of them could have skipped that process of playing on the collegiate level and went directly to the professional level. But not being a community of connect, not being a connected community with any sense of organizational structure, we are not able to provide the proper leadership that is needed in the community so we continue to make the same mistakes. So we see others come to our community grab our talent and make billions of dollars off of them and leave our youth with nothing but maybe injuries. I mean, you can't sell a college basketball team. These programs are in millions and millions of dollars for their athletic departments and for their universities. And so at the end of the day, there's a tremendous amount of value to those institutions for having these amateur athletic programs. In fact, the 20 teams on our list generated over half a billion dollars last year. In order to rank the sport's most viable teams, we took a three-year average of revenues generated from the 2013-14, the 2015-16, and the 2016-17 seasons, the three most recent years for which we have financial data available from filings made by athletic departments, the NCAA and Department of Education. So how do these teams actually make money? Much like pro sports teams, you have tickets for your home games, parking, concessions, merchandise that you're selling in the arena and online. You have media rights deals, that comes from the NCAA tournament, the conference level deals, and even individual school level media rights deals. And then kind of the golden egg for a lot of these programs. Astonishing wealth the Europeans generate off of these black bodies. Then you turn around, you look at the communities that these black bodies come from. You see no correlation. So you see a community developing this talent but not benefiting off this talent. You see uh, 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 people going around in the community with basketball uh, teams, uh, black males coaching basketball teams, all the way on the kids' level. Then when you develop them to a level where they can generate wealth out of them, that's when the white people come. And your community left hoping he succeed and push back some residuals. You get some pennies off of the wealth of the, that his family members spend in the community. That is the best that our community receive from this talent that is being stripped out of our communities. Add in $4 million in media rights and another $3 million from the NCAA and their conferences, and you start seeing how TV and really the broadcast and media aspect of the game is generating even more revenue for a college. <clears throat> the main reason why they feel threatened by NIL deals is advertising budgets. Most companies, it, all companies, only have a certain amount of money allocated for advertisement. Mm -hmm. So they do not want to have to compete with that, with that money that's allocated for advertisement with individual athletes. Because we understand so much of the sports are individually athlete driven, the fan base. So for them, they had all of the athletes under one umbrella. And they that allowed them to encompass the wealth generated from the collective of each teammate while giving uh while giving athletes none. But what happened is white people greed overplayed their hand. These youth fought for the right 
to have NIL deals, one, and now these NCAA companies have to compete with these athletes, not only their skills, but as well as their personalities. And this gives these athletes a competitive advantage. So when it comes to let the market decide, when it free market, when it favors us, Congress, Senate, the government changed the laws. $11 million is the largest NCAA uh, shoe deal, apparel deal. That pales in comparison to NFL individual players, so you can see why NCAA do not want to compete against individual players uh, for apparel deals. Also, everything that it takes to put on an NCAA show is within our community. And everything they take to put on an NCAA tournament basically comes from without our come from out our community. The stadiums are taxed, are, are paid for due to taxes, mostly sale taxes. And if you look it up throughout most countries, if you look into it, sales taxes are highest in black in the counties with the highest black populations. So all the things that was used to create this wealth was funded off the backs of blacks. The talent that is used to create the wealth, to create the uh, atmosphere, the environment that draws the crowd is majority of blacks. But the people who benefit from it is not blacks. This is what a lack of unity do to us. And then comes the real secret sauce, those alumni contributions. Last season, Louisville received $33 million from alumni. I mean, that alumni contributions are a significant portion of the money these teams generate every year. To give you an example, we'll take the number one team on this year's list of college basketball's most valuable teams, the Louisville Cardinals. The Cardinals have been beset by down seasons on the court. They're currently weathering a handful of scandals over the last few years, and yet no team makes more money. So how do they do that? Number one, ticket sales. Louisville generates over $12 million. Those who have succeeded reach back, alumni. That's the real secret sauce. This is why we are not to reward black billionaires if they are not giving back to your community. Why do we continue to celebrate people who have made it off the backs of us and fail to build a ladder for others to climb. And I'm talking about as a collective, not just your brother, your cousin, your family members. I'm talking about did you leave a way, have you established a way for others in the community to propel forward? This is what alumni do for colleges. They make sure the resources is there for they can create the environment necessary to get the full potential of the athlete's talent. This is what we have to do in the black community. We have to take our resources and make sure that we can fully develop the resources and the talents of the youth in our community. I tell parents all the time, your biggest investment will be your children. Ask LeVar Ball. In fact, last year they got $14 million from ticket sales alone. And you get another million dollars from just concessions and parking. And then you tack on another $6 million in sponsorships. And that includes the basketball team's share of Louisville's Total Athletics apparel deal with Adidas, which pays $11 million a year, you know, the second most that any athletic department in the country gets for its apparel in order to provide the uniforms and gear for all of Louisville. Break down the revenue streams. What does that tell you when he tells you that alumni support that is why we have to hold our so-called black billionaires uh, accountable for their in inactivity in our community we should hold them to the standards of an alumni so 
it, what does it tell you for us to be able to provide their services? Because everything he listed in there is within our community and we can provide. So if the resources is there, the talent is there, what is preventing us from being able to generate anything or any wealth off of the talents in our community in that same manner? It's a lack of organization. It's a lack of unity. It's a lack of structure within the black community. And I say this, and I've said it repeatedly, black men, our failure to unite is demasculating, emasculating. Black men, our failure to unite is self-emasculating. What college alumni do for their universities is what blacks should expect those who have or come up out the community to do for the community they come from. You're an alumni for our community. This is why I'm not one for celebrating black so-called billionaires. I should be able to see your investment back in your community. And if I don't see that, then why would we as a people celebrate these people? You, ha you have to understand we cannot do that unless they're acting in the manner of an ice cube, building infrastructures, and hopefully reaching back to the inner city and setting up a ladder for us to climb or ways so that we are not, when we do have those talents, we do not have to be exploited like we do through college, if we can have our own infrastructures. This is the obligations of the so-called black excellence. This is the requirement of the black achieve, of so-called who have achieved multi-millions of dollars and billions of dollars. You are required to come back to your community. You're required to help set up infrastructure so that others can build and progress. Not come back to your community flashing your jewelry and showing off your fancy car. Because that'll get you hurt. This is wealth coming strictly out of our community. The NCAA most profitable team I'm going to show you their top 10 athletes. It's the black, it's blacks who's building their wealth. Last year, Louisville made $55 million in revenue, most of any team in college basketball. So for all the talk people make about this being amateur athletics, very clearly college basketball is a game of big numbers, big finances, big business. And this is something we've been looking at now for about a decade, and the numbers are growing every year. And they're going to keep growing. And we're going to see at the athletic level that these contributions and the money that teams are able to make by raising ticket prices, by raising concessions prices, uh, you know, are all going to continue to rise. It explains why coaches are getting paid more, and it explains at the end of the day you know, how these teams are really worth this much money. Because a lot of people say, you know, get, get upset with student athletes and say that they're not focused on school and, and they're not taking advantage of, of the opportunity they're given. I would love for, for a regular student to, to have a student athlete schedule during the season for just, just one quarter or one semester and, and, and show me how you balance that. You know, show me how you would, you would schedule your classes when you can't schedule classes from, from 2 to 6, six o'clock on any given day. You know, show me how you're gonna, gonna get all your work done when you, when after, you know, you get out at 7.30 or so, you got a test the next day, you're dead tired from practice and you still have to study just as hard as everybody else every day and get every, all the same work done. You know, most of these kids are. This is what is meant when we say blacks work three times harder in order to do the same, to get to the same position as whites. This is also an example of how black labor is financing the education of whites. That sports help finance and subsidize most Europeans' education, while blacks are the backbone 
of the fight of the sports. They're they're upset when a student athlete says they need a little cash. Um, well, I can tell you from from experience, I had negative forty bucks in my account, and usually my account was in a negative more times than it was in a positive. You know, you got to make decisions on whether you get gas for your car or whether you get the meal for the day. You know what? You got one of the two choices, um, and people think, oh, you you you're on scholarship. They pay for your room and board. They pay for your your education, but to to their knowledge, you're there to play football. You're not on scholarship for school. And it sounds crazy when a student athlete says that, but that's, that, those are the things coaches tell them every day. You're not on scholarship for, for, for school. And, you know, luckily I was, I was, I was blessed to go to Stanford and, and a school that was, that was primarily focused on academics. So it was, it was a blessing. It was a, it was a little bit better. Um, as, but Jim, as Jim Harbaugh would attest, we were also.